Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's Rebecca Overson, and we are going live in the art of building a successful massage practice. And I'm very excited about our guest today. I want you guys to meet Martina. She has been a licensed massage therapist here in Utah. Go Utes! <laughs> For the last four and a half years. I actually met her because she was a client of Salt Lake Prenatal Massage uh, while she was pregnant with her first child. And then she, um, she applied to work at my clinic. And then uh, I'll let her tell more of her story, but um, she's uh, my, my fellow comrade here in Utah and uh, got the awesome privilege of working with her to help her build a business that meets her needs. And I think, you know, we have a lot of success stories where we focus on uh, growth and dollars and revenue and, and, and things like that. And, and today I want to really emphasize that success can be lots of different things. And for Martina, it's about having a practice that really supports her in what stage of life that she's in. But man, she made a complete 180. She, uh, she started out um, doing, doing uh, you know, some other things, but really discovered her, her passion and is now building the right business for her based on what she feels she was put on this planet to do. But it's also very much in line with her commitment to be focused on her children. And you guys, she's got twins. I mean, Martina came over to my house a, a month ago and she was wearing this pack and she's got what, baby A and baby B on the back. She's just an absolute rock star, super tenacious and super resourceful. And I'm very, very excited for you guys to hear her story, right? Okay. Okay, so let's see, Martina, let me bring you on the screen and we'll get going here. Hello, beauty. Hi. Is our, is our sound working? We're good. Yes. No, no echo. Okay, awesome. No echo. <clears throat> so I was just bragging about how awesome you are and this rock star mama with twins and how we met and all of that stuff and how we were at my house <laughs> a month ago, you know. So yeah. but why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself and just share a little bit about your journey and uh, just briefly how you became a massage therapist and uh, what you were up to before you and I connected in this. I mean, we've had several connections, right? In yeah. This, uh, in this uh, small lake city, we call it. But, um, you know, how we finally got connected to do business strategy and mindset work together. So, yeah. So um, I graduated from the Utah College of Massage Therapy in 2015. And I went to massage school because I was really trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life. I've always I've always wanted to help people no matter what, like, career thought I've had. I just wanted to do something with people and interact um, and I got a massage one day and I honestly walked out of it and just thought I could do this. <laughs> so I enrolled in massage school. I don't know. <laughs> nice. Cra crazy thoughts, but it led to something amazing. So mm. that's what led me to massage therapy. Um, as for you and I, I, after my first child was born, I interviewed with you at the Salt Lake City prenatal massage mm -hmm. place and, mm -hmm. uh, chose not to follow that it was not the right time mm -hmm. <laughs> we had a good conversation about we that, had a I good remember. <laughs> I have a way of helping people get clear about what they want to be doing I remember you're like I really want to but I realize this is not the right time for me <laughs> yeah yep. yeah I, I realize that more and more life tells me what's right and what's not mm. but um wasn't Kristen yeah. your doula yes yep okay. so she was my doula for both um both births that I had and she's right. super awesome, and I still she get is. massage from her sometimes too. We do trade, which is awesome. You guys, Kristen was one of my employees at Salt Lake Prenatal Massage, and we offer doula services as well. So she and I were, you know, kind of partners in the doula world, and she got to support Martina in giving birth twice. So yeah, love it. She cool. was awesome. Yeah, she is awesome. Yeah. So that's how you and I, I guess got connected, and then I followed this group for a long time, and. Mm. Man, this year, having jumped from one to three kids, I was just like, I I work from 5 a.m. till 1.30 at my other job, and I just, I'm over it. It's not mm. the life I want. I want to be home with my kids and still work and provide, but in the best and smartest way possible. So that's what led me yeah. to you officially this year. <laughs> Yay. What was the other job yeah. you were doing? 5 a.m.? 
Yeah, it's, I work for a financial company and I just do oh, right. like audit work. So right. yeah. Yeah. Gosh. So you go all night without any sleep and then you get up to go to work. <laughs> right. It's super fun. Yeah. Was a, whoa. yeah. Oh my goodness. So what, um, what was it that, that caused you to, I mean, obviously you've had major lifestyle changes, you know, having twins and a toddler. How old are your babies now? Uh, almost eight months. Eight months, and then your daughter is how old? Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, so what was the real problem that you were facing at the time when you decided to go a different direction, or you know, to to really focus on your massage practice? Was it just that your schedule sucked, or what, what was it that you really needed? Um. Yeah. Just. Gosh, it's so much responsibility. The how how do you fit in a full time job? all the kids plus like my husband and I we work opposite shifts so we don't have to worry about daycare and we're the ones interacting with our kids Mm -hmm. and that means we don't really see each other so Mm -hmm. it was just like everything our whole lifestyle that I was like I do not want this life Mm -hmm. I want something more and seeing um your success (laughs) seeing the success of other people like why can't I have that I can Mm -hmm. Yeah, And so that, I think that was the ultimate shift. It's just, I'm sick of living this nine to five, even though I'm not working nine to five. Right. Um, I'm just, I'm sick of the corporate world. I don't believe in it. So. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think would have, what, why, what do you think would have happened had you stayed there? Had you not made that, followed that, that pull? Well, because a lot of people do that. Do you know what I mean? Corporate jobs give you security. And I'm not saying yeah. you shouldn't have them. I'm not saying you should. But I just know I've talked to a lot of massage therapists that keep not doing what they want to do because of that job security, predictability of income and stuff like that. So what do you think would have happened had you just stayed? Well, I will clarify that I have, I am still there. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing like a total full time. Mm-hmm. But um, I will tell you that since I'm still there, I have a lot of anxiety, like the stress that this, mm. that this corporate world gives me, like, it's just too much. It's too much demand right there, right now. There's no concern for people's well being. At least I don't feel that there is. Mm. Um, so that would also be another reason is for my own mental well being is to just get out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. the shift hasn't totally happened yet. I'm on my way, but... But um, the shift being like the decision that I've got to start building something of my own so yes. that I can give myself those options. That's yeah. 100% there. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, you're in a really, in, you know, you're in a really critical spot, right? Where it's like now you've got things moving forward in your massage practice and yeah. your goals to get to the point where you can quit that job. Yes. Yeah, Totally. Now you only graduated from my program like two months ago. Let's see, you st- you started in July, so August, September, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, um, with respect to your practice, what problems were you facing before the program? Like, what specifically was going on in your massage practice that caused you to reach out and book a call? Um, no clients, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because I was pregnant with twins. I was doing like out call stuff last year. Um, but I just couldn't, I couldn't keep doing it. I couldn't carry that table. My body was totally mm-hmm. done. So mm-hmm. I just took a break from it for a while. So I really, I had nothing, um, mm-hmm. basically starting from scratch, I would say. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm trying to remember your total question. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Just what what problems were you facing for the pro- so you yeah. know like what what was going on? You you just you know I know you wanted to have a start creating a different lifestyle for yourself, which you're yep. in the process of doing, right? Um, you had this you know your other job and being you know full time mom of of three kids and you know really wanting that flexible schedule, but um, you also said you didn't have a niche. Yeah. Right. So yep. you're just kind of which you guys is like fatal mistake number one for those of you that have not seen my five shifts for creating your own successful massage practice. It's a free webinar. You can grab it at my website, rockyourmassagepractice.com. But spoiler alert, that's the first thing we talk about is stop trying to get everyone on your massage table. So yes. Yeah. Well, and when- you had said too, in I think one of these um, live calls that you did or uh, Q and A's in this group about mm-hmm. out call and how 
don't do it if you're just doing it to save money. And that's totally why I was doing it. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. So that's another takeaway, you guys, right? That's I talk to a lot of therapists that are just doing out call because they don't know how to get clients. Yeah. And so they're afraid to commit to a space. And an out call business is a totally different. An out call is a niche. Basically. Yes. Out call yeah. is a niche. So that's the problem is I'm going to go build this other practice. And then when I get an office space, I'm going to start all over again. And that's people don't realize that that's what they're doing. So, yep. yeah. And awesome. it was not the niche that I wanted. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Schlepping. I was like, oh, schlepping a massage table around while pregnant with twins. That sounds not very awesome at all. No. <laughs> it was not. I don't even like to do it when I'm not pregnant, you know. My poor so. clients were like, can I help you? And I'm like, no, like, I just gave you a massage. <laughs> I'm the therapist. I got this. And they're like, yeah. you poor pregnant woman. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> totally, Martina. Oh, my gosh. So um, you had a lot of stress. You had a lot of stress going on. And you said, when I asked you, why did you have to solve it? You said you were just, you were going to keep living a life that you didn't want to live. And that's why it wasn't okay with you. Yep. Yeah. It's like something has to change or else I'm going to go bananas you know? Yes. So what did you, what was the main thing for you that you got, um, in during the eight week program, you made some really monumental <laughs> shifts, but they were yeah. mostly, mostly on the inside. So that's what I really want you to talk about today is what, what happened for you? I would definitely say that your, all the things that you shared with me and the group and everybody about mindset work that that was probably the most beneficial and a lot of communication stuff too that was just mm. like yes mm. um i need to learn that communication <laughs> skills but yeah. um yeah so all of that was incredibly monumental for me um P.S. I am an emotional person, so <laughs> I'm going to try to keep that contained today, but we'll see. Oh, my gosh. I was crying, <laughs> actually, right before we got on this call, so don't even worry about it. Oh, like, good. <laughs> I was actually – I have a, um, a podcast. I don't know if you saw. I just posted, and I was listening. I was like, oh, my gosh, this podcast, because it was such a deeply personal interview. And I was going back, and I, at the part of the podcast, I was listening to my story with depression and pregnancy and birth. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm interviewing Martina today. And it was just like all the things and my eyes started leaking. So it's okay. It's okay. okay. Get emotional <laughs> because that's the human in you. And we really want to, we want to honor that. So tell us more about yes. like, what was the fear? What was the fear that you, that you uh, were dealing with and, and, and were able to let go of? Oh, so many fears. I'm, I'm actually looking at a journal. <laughs> so oh, good. Oh I, yeah. Get it. Um, which I will say that I have never in my life finished a journal my whole entire life. I'm 29 until this year, and I'm almost done with my second, and it's all because of joining the Academy. I've had wow. so many things to write down. So. Wow. Um, but with this, the first thing I'd say, yeah, just fear of not succeeding, fear of being financially stressed and strapped, like not being able to afford our home and our, you know, taking care of our children, um, fear of disappointing my husband. That's, you know, like we have such a good relationship. We don't really fight. So I would hate to ever put us in a scenario where I screw it all up because, you know, I, I take a risk. Mm. Um, there's fear of, Uh, I think honestly, there was fear of being able to be successful, and that's still kind of something I'm dealing with a little bit. But isn't that like, interesting? Yeah, <laughs> frequently throughout my journal, it just keeps talking about like allowing it. Am I allowing myself to have this? Mm. So, what's scary yeah. for you about it's interesting how we can both be uh, afraid of failing. Yeah, and afraid of succeeding. Yeah. Like what aspect of it do you feel like is most scary when you think about succeeding? And as you've discovered in your journey, like what's that really about? It's probably right there in your journal, right? <laughs> it probably is somewhere, yeah. Um, gosh, I think it's 
I don't even know that I have words for it. It's this really weird feeling that I have when I think about succeeding. Um, mm. The best way that I can say this, a friend of mine shared this once with her own story about storms in our lives. We, and also um, the book Healing Trauma from Peter Levine um, mm -hmm. talks about this as well. Yeah. Um, Let's see. He talks about how those with past traumas often create reoccurrences where the same thing or similar thing will happen. Um, and then my friend had mentioned this too in her life. The when she feels calm, she goes out and creates a storm because she can't handle the calm. Mm -hmm. And I think when I think about succeeding, I feel that calm, and that calm freaks me out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because I've never had that calm. I also always create a storm over and over and mm -hmm. all the cycles just keep going. And so that's that's what I've been working on and that's what I've gained is all the mindset work that you've provided for us. I keep using it so to try mm. to get rid of all those storms. I don't need them anymore. And it's cool to see the shift. It's obviously a continuous process, but yeah. the shift is happening and I am able to get that calm. Awesome. Yeah. It's kind of like doing mindset work. It's a little bit like, um, like food and dieting. It's like, uh -huh. you can't just eat <laughs> once and for all and have it handled. It's just done. You know what I mean? But it's mm -hmm. also like losing weight, you know, like you can lose 20, 30, 50, 80 pounds or whatever, but it's like, okay, I lost it. Now I can go back to my old habits. It's maintaining at a whole new level, a whole new standard for yourself. Once yeah. you realize you can be free from it and you have the tools to be free from it, your tolerance for being stuck goes way down. You know, you just don't tolerate it anymore. So what, um, let's talk about your, let's talk about your niche. Yeah. Um, Which I was going to say that also my niche that I settled with was probably a fear as well. I think I've known for a long, long time. I just don't think I've ever recognized it really or wanted to accept it. So, yeah. So yeah. did you have, so you didn't have a niche before other than you were just working on everybody and just doing out calls. Correct. Right? Um, okay. So I'll just, my, I'll share my niche. Um, yeah. My niche is offering relief to those who have anxiety and then support for survivors of physical and sexual abuse. Um, and why did you choose, why did you choose that? And how did you get around to that? I'm yeah. sure you're going to tell that, but yeah. So okay. Obviously, I deal with anxiety. I've already shared that. That's something that happened post my first child and mm -hmm. has continued to come after these other children. Um, but I, I know that touch can be a huge help for that and like massage can help reduce that. Um, and then I myself am a survivor of physical and sexual abuse. And I just really want to provide a safe space for those people who have had it, like to integrate that positive touch back into their life um I would say I was so young that it's it doesn't phase me and I can't even imagine being older and experiencing something like that or having years and years and years of it where you know mine wasn't for that many years but um I just can't imagine what is going on mentally and physically in their body and um I just really want to give them a place to come to to just let it go so mm, that's awesome. that is my goal and over the last few years um a friend of mine and I we had started a women's group and um it started based off of a conversation with our past traumas that we've had and that just many things that I've done over the years or talked about um or feel passionate about I think has led me to the realization of what my niche is. Was it scary for you to embrace that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in here I wrote, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, for you, what do you, because it's a really big, brave thing. Cause first of all, a, I mean, let's just talk about the obvious thing. The rest of the world is like, what does massage therapy have to do with anxiety or other than, you know, very surface kinds of concepts of stress relief and all of that stuff. Right. Yeah. But like providing support for survivors of trauma and sexual abuse. That's a tall order. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And so I wrote what... here, not sure yet if I want to dive that deep with clients. <laughs> I think that was it. It's heavy. It's heavy, heavy work. And um, you have to be careful not to 
take on their energy, you know, or like that's their load. It's not for you to keep. And Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes I do walk away with someone else's feeling or whatever. And, and that's not a healthy thing to do either. And I don't want to take that home. So it's, it's like, do I really want to work with people in that capacity? That's, that's a big calling. I would say big thing to do. Yeah. And, and why did you finally settle on that? Life has led me here. That's, I, although I was so young, I am a survivor. I have, um, I have that experience. I I am willing to talk about it. People are not willing to talk about it. I am. Mm. I am willing to be open about it. And I do see the light there. I have seen the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I, I have experienced joy after all that and overcome challenges. And um, I guess one thing, ministry and when I when I oh she froze sorry you wait you froze for just a second you said one thing that and then you froze okay that you had said throughout the program was um your misery is your ministry and when I heard that I I just remember I lost it I was just bawling because I was Mm. like oh shit like (laughs) I have to do this no I Rebecca's (laughs) making me no so um that's what yeah, that's just what stood out to me. And I did change it. Um, I'm adopted as well. So at first it was like uh, anxiety and abandonment or something like that. I mean, we, we definitely narrowed it down to what it really is. But mm-hmm. um, the yeah, those are the things that stood out the most. Awesome. And what do you what difference has it made for you? creating and declaring that niche for yourself as a self-expression and not just like, I think there's a market for this. You know, people confuse niche with a market. I mean, did you ever go out and like pull statistics on how many clients you might particularly have in this market? Probably not. Right. Mm -mm, No, but getting that alignment. Tell me just, let's talk up for a minute about like, what do you, what kind of difference does that make for you to know that that's, that's your niche. That's like part that is your purpose and it's expression of your purpose. Well, I think you said it by saying the word purpose. It, that is my purpose. Um, I definitely think it separates me from other people. I, I did a lot of online searching and I don't know that I actually found another massage therapist that was that specific here in Salt Lake. Um, yeah. And I would say, um, just hearing excitement from other people of saying like, Oh, this is needed. Um, other people within the wellness community, um, that just like really fired me up and even reaching out to, so here in Salt Lake, we have the rape recovery center. And when I finally reached out to them, they were all just like so excited. The mental health therapists were just, they know the importance of it. And so Mm. for me to like, to have this niche, I, I know it's needed. I know that Mm. people need it and I am now a tool for those people. You know, I'm a resource. So Mm. what's the best part about that for you, knowing that you're standing up and being a resource for these people? Um, I'm trying to think of how to word it. I would say, I wish that, um, when I was younger, I had some of the knowledge that I do now to like better to have better self care. So, um, I think it's really awesome to know that I can provide that for people, um, mm-hmm. so that they can take care of themselves quicker. Yeah, sooner. You know, I'm out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um. So you, when I asked you uh, uh, in our little pre-interview, you know, what happened in your life during the program, you just said you found a lot of clarity in what you want for your life and yourself and realized that your business goals are much bigger than you ever knew and also learned that I am my biggest roadblock. Is there anything else you want to say about any of that? Because that's a lot. There's some big things that I think are so people resonate with that. But 
you know, what, like, how has that changed things for you to get that level of clarity and realize that your business is bigger, your goals are bigger than you ever thought, and that you're the one that's standing in your way? Um, so I will answer that, but I will tell you, I hear an echo again. I don't know if you oh. do. No, but... I don't. <laughs> Dang <Okay>. it. <laughs> that's okay. I'll just keep talking, though. Okay. Um, Well, my, my ultimate goals, gosh, I see myself in the mountains in like <laughs> a lodge type of thing that I've created so people can kind of escape for the day, like a whole retreat thing. There's, there's just so many things that I see. Um, me being the roadblock, it just really shows me that nobody else is really involved. It's me versus myself. And if I can remove that um I can do it it's all there yeah awesome awesome I love it so much peace and so much clarity you know to just actually have direction now do you have your own office space remind me so um yeah like yes I'm sharing um it's a shared space it's a wellness center where we can just go in when we need to go in so it's Mm -hmm. not like my personal space um I have it's a really great place to start, but I've also learned from that experience, you know, I need my own space so I can decorate it and, you know, add my own touches that I think are going to be important um, yeah. to what I want to achieve. But it's been a good start. Awesome. So no more alcohols? Yeah. No more no. shopping? <laughs> no. Shables. I didn't do that this year at all. <laughs> or when well, I, I was saying before you, before you got on the, you know, on the video, I was saying how you came to my house and you got baby A and baby B, you know, it's like the only thing you <laughs> are schlepping around these days are your twins, which is great. You know? Yes. <laughs> so it was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, any other words of wisdom for people that might be struggling in their businesses or, doubting themselves or not being clear on their niche besides take my niche workshop on Friday. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but really like any, just any, any other points of clarity or wisdom that you want to share with people that are watching here? Yeah. So I've commented on a lot of people's like posts in this group that have said, Oh, like what should I do the program? Should I not? All I can say is do it. Um, for me and my husband, because we are a team, so we plan this together, definitely being like, okay, let's spend this money for the program. It was such a, that was also a big fear. It's just like spending money that maybe we don't necessarily have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was the best thing that I ever did. Um, best mm-hmm. money that I ever spent. And mm-hmm. I have learned so, so, so much. And the fear is real. It's a big, big leap. I mean, you've done it yourself. You had you probably had all those fears at the beginning and um, you've overcome it and we're all overcoming it. And I think that just let it go and just do it. The knowledge is amazing that you're going to learn. Um, yeah. Mm. I only talk about things like that. I actually care about. Um, <laughs> if I don't care about it, I'm not going to recommend it. So I really care about this. And I really think that anyone who wants to improve their practice, you're going to learn something valuable from the program. So just do it. Mm. You know, you're such an example of why I do what I do, because I really do this for liberation. Like my calling is liberation. And I figure if I can help liberate you from your fears, and then you're out there giving your gifts to the world, and the hundreds of people that you're going to impact, and all the people that will be impacted by the people that you've impacted, it's pretty phenomenal. It makes my eyes wet again. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty phenomenal. You know, that is so much more than getting clients. It's so much more than getting a nice, pretty logo or naming my business or finding a niche or, you know, all that stuff. It's so much more than that. You know, you are a woman that has found her purpose and has the power and ability and the tools to be able to empower yourself in the face of your fears for the rest of your life. But you also have the tools to create a business that's meaningful for you and serves your family's needs and goals. You yes. Know? And that's, to me, that's freedom. That's your, that's your liberation. And that's, you know, that's, that's why I do what I do. And I just absolutely love and adore you. I'm so I'm just watching your evolution. And I've got all the notes. I've got a record of the whole thing. You know? <laughs> and it's just yeah. so incredible to, to see you 
emerge from that cocoon of uncertainty to like total clarity and out there in our community right here, you know, in Salt Lake City, Utah, um, being able to stand up as a resource for people that have or are dealing with the symptoms of, of trauma and, and abuse and anxiety. I think it's really important what you're doing. And I just love you so much. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So Denise says, I admire your courage and dedication. And Deidre says, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Lots of good, positive comments. You've really, um, I'm sure opened up a lot of new thought, thought bubbles for a lot of people about what are they doing and what's their purpose and what's available for them outside of the, outside of the massage room, you know? Yeah. Where's your impact going to be felt? So can't awesome. wait to see where you go, mama. I, I know I'm going to be wa watching from the sidelines every single step of the way. Yeah, awesome. So, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you. Yeah, and tell tell your husband thanks too. And whoever's taking care of the babies right now so that you could be here and be present with us. That's, you know, takes a tribe. So very, very yes. grateful for your time today. <laughs> Okay. okay, thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> All right, honey, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, bye. Don't you just love her? I mean, talk about courage. Just, you know, having twins and having a toddler and twins. It's like, for me, it's just a challenge to, uh, to get out of bed every morning. You know what I mean? And then to stand for the, the support and recovery of people that are are dealing with trauma and sexual abuse and anxiety and all of those things. You know, Martina is a, I think that the, the world is going to feel the shockwave of Martina, you know, as she get rolls her, gets her dream and rolls it out there into the world. So it's always an honor and a privilege. And I hope that that inspires you guys and encourages you about what's possible and gives you some ways of thinking outside of the box as well. Okay. So um, the other thing I want to make sure that you guys know, I think I have two, maybe three spots left in this once in a lifetime workshop I'm doing on Friday. Um, it is all about finding your niche. And you guys, it is the only time I've ever offered the opportunity for people to do small scale coaching with me. Uh, normally I only work with and offer coaching like dedicated business coaching to people that have made the full commitment to my eight week program and the other things that I do. So if you are somebody who just wants to hang with me for three hours and get some stuff really clear specifically in the area of finding your niche, which for me is really about finding your passion, you guys, it's not just who do I think will buy my services. It's not just who do I think needs massage. My job is to help you get connected to your greatness and really embrace it and then build a business out there in the world that is an expression of that and that sustains it. So I want to make sure that you guys know that that is happening because it's happening in less than 24, well, a little more than 24 hours. Um, I will post the link to that below or I will post it in the description of this live once it's posted and we can go back and edit it. And then also spots open for my eight week mentoring program. You guys, this is a deep transformational dive, not only into your business, but into your life because we have to transform you as a business owner so that you can stand up as a leader in your community and create a business that really supports you and everybody else that you're out to impact. Okay. So get your applications in for that. We have certain numbers of spots available each week as people graduate and you want to grab one of those spots, but only if you want your life to be totally rocking and be elevated to a whole other plane of existence. That's what I do. It's so much more than just advice and information. That's free. You can get that on the internet anywhere or for very, very cheap. This is a very high level turbocharged rocket boosting, you know, uh, experience to train and develop you as a leader and to get your gifts out in the world like you're seeing Martina doing. And I'm so honored and thrilled when I see you guys stepping up and embracing the things that you were put on this planet to do and really putting your gifts out there in the world. It's pretty awesome. Okay. So if you're interested in that, you can just, uh, you guys go like my, uh, my page. It's just Rebecca Overson is my coaching page, or you can go to my website, which is rockyourmassagepractice.com. There is the link there where you can grab my free training. It's a 60 minute training called five shifts for creating your successful massage practice, even if you're surrounded by competition. Um, and then of course there's tons of resources available here in the group as well. Okay. So, um, and then those of you who want to attend the niche webinar, 
Um, but you know, have obligations or things like that. Like Denise just said, again, I have no plans to offer it again in the future, but people that register for it will definitely get the replay. Um, but the intention is for it to be like a live, you know, face-to-face -face workshop. It's not just a, a cheaper free webinar. It's, it's an investment that I want you to get a 10 time return on that. Okay. So, um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Feel free to reach out for me. I am here for you and to support you in your greatness being unleashed on the world. Okay. All right, you guys have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.